What's up guys, this is Chad at All Dogs Off-Road and today we're going to be doing an M205 regear video for you. Uh, we're going to strip this uh, guy down and do a little bit of R&D work. I've got some prototype 4.08 ratio uh, gears that are going to go in there and then those will eventually go into my truck along with the matching gear set for the rear M226. Um, the M205, which is what this is here, uh, comes out of first gen Nissan Titans and Armadas. And uh, what we're, what we're going to be doing here is akin to uh, stepping up like in, the, in a Jeep world from say like a Dana 30 uh, front axle to a Dana 44. Uh, Nissan Frontiers, Xterras, and V6 Pathfinders would come with the R180A differential, which is right here and kind of in pieces. This is just a, a piece that I've cannibalized for R&D work and, and that sort of thing. But um, smaller uh, ring gear, smaller pinion, uh, just, you know, it's, you're, you're, you're going to be stepping up in, in strength and durability. Um, the... Nice thing about the M205 is it's a direct bolt-in upgrade for uh, Frontier and Xterras and some R51 Pathfinders. Um, all you have to do really is source the uh, correct corresponding CVs, which would come from a V8 Pathfinder. And you can still find those on Rock Auto. Um, so M205s are plentiful in junkyards and they're relatively inexpensive, you know, depending on your location. Uh, there were two different styles for the housing itself. There's what was called a two rib, uh, which would have two rib uh, castings um, on the top of the diff. And then you have a three rib. And really the three rib is more desirable because uh, the housing or the, the, the casing is stronger and there's been reports that the the two rib is prone to cracking or breaking so i'm gonna start tearing the m205 down i'm gonna pull the cover off uh, pull the stub shafts uh, and expose the uh, carrier with the ring gear mounted to it um, the m205 is nice because rather than shims like the r180 has it's got threaded adjusters so um, we'll strip everything down we'll be able to get to the threaded adjusters loosen them and then the the carrier should come right out so let's get to it hey we did drain it good so your uh your uh, cap screws are 13 mil I forgot to mention that your cover is going to be a 10 mil. I'm not sure on the Allens yet. I'm sure that they're probably a 4 mil or 5 mil. We'll see here in a minute. It looks like they're a 4 mil. Yep. Okay. Our TV is in the way. All right. So you're... Your lock screws on your threaded adjusters are backed off. Now you can pull your caps. Let me grab a, I like to keep everything semi-organized so that it all goes back in the same place. Oh man, that stinks. But all right, so now you should have your threaded adjusters exposed. It might be easier to take this piece of your housing off. Um, there's like a inverted hex on this side, and then this side is just a gigantic hex over here. So right now I'm loosening 
the threaded adjuster on what would be the passenger side. Um, some rebuild kits have a, a special tool that's included. Uh, mine does not, so a while back I took an axle nut and basically <laughs> made my own tool. Uh, just made cut like uh, some hex grooves into it and welded it all together. And that's worked just fine for me. But this side should be loose. Yep. Now we'll loosen the other side. I believe that this is a 40 mil, but I can't find my, I need to back that out some more. I can't find a 40 mil right now, so. All right, guys, we are back on this M205 diff. This is day two. Uh, yesterday, we had to stop because I didn't have a large enough socket to get the threaded uh, carrier adjuster here. So we ordered one on Amazon that was shipped next day, and it's a uh, JTEC tool, 46 mil, and uh, didn't do a great job ordering this. So the, the OD of the socket was too big to fit. Uh, luckily, we got a lathe here in the shop and I just machined the, uh, the OD down slightly to give me enough room to be able to get in and engage. And then doubly, I ordered the wrong size here, but I didn't need, um, when, once, once I could get it on there, I had enough leverage that I could rotate the adjuster just fine. So now we can pick up from where we left off and that was gonna be pulling the carrier. I've already taken and loosened here, so that's all good. And now the carrier should come right out. Carrier cap off, and some guys will mark, so they'll stamp one and two, and then so that they can keep their orientation. Um, I generally just set things down and remember where they are, or just refer to video that we shoot. So. Um, if you're doing this on your own, it probably wouldn't hurt to mark them one and two so that you know your side. You really want them to be uh, going back right where they came from. So now, oh, I need a little bit more. So loosen. And there we go. Our carrier is out. And carry erases come right out with it. That's one of the real nice things about the M205 is it's just a very DIY friendly or um, you know any anyone that's familiar with a Dana uh, should be able to rebuild this. Um, we'll clean up the inside with a towel a little bit and I'll go grab the R180 carrier just to compare for you guys so you can see the difference in size and beefiness. So really quick comparison wise, uh, there are a couple things that lend more strength to the M205 versus the R180 when it comes to the ring and pinion. You have a larger uh, width of your uh, tooth here, which is gonna give you more engagement through the rotation. Um, so you're just gonna have more surface area engaging at all times. Uh, aside from that, you're larger in diameter. You're basically a, uh, an eight inch versus what's pretty much a seven inch ring gear, um, carrier bearings, both are fairly beefy. I actually, I think I probably like the carrier bearings on the R180 a little bit better, but that's fine, that's whatever. Let's see if I can show you <laughs> side by side the difference. Heavy. So now that we're at this point and the carrier's out, what we'll do is we'll continue disassembling the, uh, the housing here. We'll get the pinion out, uh, and then we will remove our ring gear, uh, apply our new ring gear to the carrier, and then uh, start our reassembly. There's your tail pinion race, and then we'll get the head pinion race here. Usually you want to use like a soft metal. Okay. 
And there is your head race. So, you guys have seen me probably struggle with this diff a little bit. It's not been my most graceful one, but also not my worst, thankfully. Um, so, it's basically all stripped down uh, just to the housing. Uh, there's like a little oil galley right here, but there's no reason really to take that out or take that apart. Your thread adjuster here has needle bearings. Um, on the Toyota side of the world, guys replace that with like a needle bearing eliminator, which is like a solid rubber bushing, or not rubber, I'm sorry, but like bimetal or trimetal. Um, I might have nicked that right there, but it'll be okay when it seals. Um, but I haven't seen or heard of needle bearing failures on uh, the Nissan side of things. So you could, if you were doing a full rebuild, probably replace this bearing. Would probably maybe be a good idea, but we won't be doing that for, for this guy here. So now that we're all stripped down, uh, we'll do just like we did with our M226 video. I'll probably open up the master rebuild kit, throw the races in the freezer to let them chill off to make driving them in uh, easier. And we'll strip the uh, pinion down. <sighs> There's our crush sleeve. We may uh, reuse that or use a new one. Um, best practice would be to use a new one, but I don't like torquing them. So we'll see if that gets as close as is. Uh, and then you'll want this oil slinger here is actually also your your pinion depth shim. So we'll transfer everything over to the prototype ring and pinion, see where that gets us for pattern. Uh, hopefully it'll be close. That would be nice. Um, if not, then we'll just have to be tearing things back down and then setting our pinion depth. And then it should be good as new. I don't like the ring gear bolts that come with master rebuild kits, so I typically reuse my ring gear bolts. So I'll, I'll take them out, throw them in a cup, and throw some brake clean in there to get the gear oil off of them uh, because they're going to get Loctite applied at time of installation in the new ring gear. And you want to get that oil and grease off of there. And then usually your ring gear will come off with a couple taps. Like so. And we'll start with the bearing puller. And that's your strip carrier. So now other than pulling your spider gears and like your adjusters, uh, we're about as stripped down as this diff can get. The carrier here, uh, we're gonna put new bearings on and then we'll put the the ring on uh, with the ring gear bolts with red loctite and then we'll start working on the pinion getting that ready and then we'll uh, try to get our uh, pinion bearing preload dialed in So we're working on our gear setup right now. We've got our uh, pinion preload uh, about where I want it. And uh, we got our backlash dialed in. Uh, we're gonna take a, a pattern here in just a few minutes. But uh, the purpose for doing this install is the, these gears right here that we have our prototype uh, 4.08 ratio gears. 
Uh, they don't exist on the market yet. And so we're doing our first test fitting and we're checking for clearances and making sure that everything is correct. Now on an M205, when you go deeper in gearing, typically when that happens, you're increasing the thickness of your ring gear and you're shrinking the head of your pinion. And on an M205, that becomes problematic because you have two ridges right here. And as you bring your ring gear closer and closer, you start to create a clearance issue. Now on our 3692 gears, um, they were, they're slightly thinner than these 4.08 gears. And we only had to really bevel uh, the outer edge here uh, very lightly, very slightly. But there's about a, a two millimeter difference in height between the 3692 and these 408s, if I remember correctly from the engineering diagrams. So what I found in order to get this gear set up is I had to grind the case. Now, obviously for production pieces, that's not ideal. Um, I wanna run this gear set, so I'm fine taking that chance. But what we'll probably do is pass uh, some pictures and some feedback onto our uh, engineers that are working on these gears with us and see if we can re uh, increase our uh, uh, bevel on these 408s uh, just ever so slightly so that guys at home you know have a bolt-in installation without having to do any sort of clearancing. Um, here in the shop we don't care and uh, one of my favorite terms is self-clearancing you know it's a it's a steel gear and aluminum housing it'll just make room when it needs to, um, which obviously isn't ideal. We'd never sell product like that to an end user, but this is part of the R&D process, you know, uh, having products designed to your specs and then test fitting and seeing whether uh, you did a good job or not. Um, I made this calculation, you know, based off of our 3692s and it's pretty darn close. I mean, it's just just kissing the lip here and you know there could be variance in the castings of the housing to where some may and some may not but we want to reduce that chance as much as we can while still keeping a strong ring gear now other manufacturers that are doing uh, m205 gear sets what they're actually doing in order to create this clearance is they're shrinking the diameter of the ring gear they're actually lopping off this whole outer edge by like, oh uh, gosh, almost even a half inch. And you're ending up with a much smaller ring gear for a deeper ratio, which makes for a much weaker gear set. So, you know, we're trying to keep as much material and keep, keep as much uh, mesh or contact as we can. So, you know, we're trying to build strong gear sets that will last. Um, it's actually really shocking if you look at like a uh, some of the other manufacturers out there like Nitro or Yukon or whatnot uh, and what they've done to net that clearance. So where other companies are actually shrinking the diameter of the ring gear in order to create clearance, what we're trying to do is give ourselves a little bit of a bevel uh, while still keeping, you know, your full uh, ring gear uh, diameter and width. So Hopefully we'll get this dialed in and then ADO gears will be the best and the strongest on the market. That's a good pattern. So we just took our pattern and uh, we got really lucky first try and it's pretty darn acceptable like to where I wouldn't even bother tearing it down and trying to make any adjustments. My, my pinion bearing preload right now feels a little light but uh, once I torque everything down I think that that'll uh, tighten up quite a bit. Now like we said earlier in this video these are prototype gears. Um, there are some adjustments that I had to make to the case here to make this fit and it's gonna go on my truck. Uh, I'll be taking the 22 Frontier and throwing the M205 in the front along with V8 Pathfinder CVs. And then in the rear, uh, I've got a matching gear set over yonder. Uh, and this I wasn't worried about. I've re-geared M205s before and torn them down. And 
for a front diff, they're actually one of the nicer ones to, to do, especially compared to like a Toyota clamshell, which absolutely sucks. But I haven't been into a, a rear diff on a third gen yet. It could be possible that uh, Nissan and or Dana made some changes to uh, pinion bearings, carrier bearings, uh, pinion diameters, that sort of thing. And that's just gonna be a big wild card. I don't think that'll make it into a video because I wanna get that done before uh, a road trip that I'll be taking here pretty soon. So I might come in over the weekend uh, to do that. So we will be at some point doing like a, a full kind of update on the 22 Frontier. Um, and uh, maybe by that time, I'll be able to share some details on the re-gear uh, for the rear on one of the third gens. So I'm gonna put this back together. Uh, it's gonna be not much different from tearing it down. I'll put the, the passenger side kind of stub of the housing in and the stub shaft. Put this, well, I need to get a, a I'll probably get some new seals, actually. The, the master rebuild kit came with a pinion seal. It did not come with the uh, uh, outer seals here. So I'll have to get those from our local Nissan dealership. Other than that, it's pretty much done. I haven't put the pinion seal in, so I'll, I'll take the yoke off, throw the seal on. I like Permatex Right Stuff as a gasket maker for the front cover. Uh, eventually throw it in the truck, so. This wasn't going to be a super informative video and maybe I'll do like a step-by-step -step re gear at some point. It's kind of, it's so hot here in Lincoln right now, right Mike? Oh yeah. Yeah. And uh, so it, it's hard to like sit and like detail, here's how you do this and that and that and that. Uh, the N205 is probably going to be one of the more user-friendly re gears um, to do. You do need a lot of tools though. I mean, you'll need, uh, you know, bearing pullers, um, and so on. Uh, I'd guesstimate if you were to do this yourself, you'd probably need mm, three or four hundred dollars worth of specialty tools, you know, that you wouldn't really use for anything other than a re-gear. Eventually, we may offer this as a service at All Dogs, so you could buy like a pre-built M205 to throw in your truck. You would just have to take it locally and have your rear done or something like that. But that's probably gonna be a ways down the road because we're pretty uh, bandwidth limited uh, already with the three of us. So we'll see. You wanna say hi, Kyle? We're sweaty. <laughs> Hello. I got a video coming too soon here. Yeah. Working on it right now, that's why I'm sweating my ass off. Yeah, we got a bunch of videos that we're gonna shoot before Overland Expo Mountain West that will be in at the end of this month. What is that, the 26th, 27th, 28th of August? That'll be in Loveland, Colorado. Um, so we're going to cram a bunch in here over this week and next, and then we'll probably see more videos coming out later in September, I'm guessing. So like, subscribe, and do all that stuff. Thanks for watching and joining us, and we'll see you later.